This will be the first national wind farm conference in Scotland. This conference will bring together wind farm protest groups from across the country, from Shetland to the borders, from Makrahanish and Tyree uh, to Davamur on the edge of the Cairngorms National Park, because the country has united against the uh, ridiculous target that the SNP government has set of trying to produce 100% of energy from renewable sources by 2020. Even uh, major experts like KPMG have said this is just not achievable. Already we are seeing the results. Not only is Scotland now bristling with giant industrial wind turbines, which are springing up in the most horrific places, uh, in some of our most unique uh, bits of landscape, which is our USP in Scotland, you know, our, our uh, selling point for tourism to bring people from all across the world is being trashed almost on a daily basis. But now we're talking about offshore wind farms. Now even Donald Trump, who wants to invest millions building one of the world's greatest golf courses in the Aberdeenshire coast, uh, has been told that the SNP policy will lead to a wind farm being built just off the shore, uh, destroying the seascape for all of the people he wants to attract to his development. I mean, what kind of policy is it where you attract somebody to come and make a huge inward investment in your tourist industry and then you spit in their face uh, by developing this offshore wind uh, facility right in front of their tourist project? It wouldn't be so bad if these industrial wind turbines actually delivered. The problem is they only work for between 22 and 30 percent of their active life. The onshore turbines in Scotland last year produced electricity for around 22 percent of the time because when the wind isn't blowing they don't work. When the wind's blowing too hard they have to switch them off in case the blades break and sometimes when the electricity grid is overloaded they actually pay the big energy companies and the wealthy landowners not to produce electricity. They pay them to switch off these turbines. Uh, in the last year, they have paid more than £11.8 million to wealthy landowners and companies to switch off the turbines when the grid was overloaded. It's scandalous. Now, you must remember that the government does not give one penny of subsidy to this industry. All of these huge costs for the feed-in tariffs, for the renewable obligation certificates, are churned day by day into the pockets of mostly foreign energy companies or into the pockets of wealthy estate and landowners and farmers coming directly out of the pockets of the consumers. And that's why a quarter of households in Scotland are now facing fuel poverty. Elderly people this winter will have the choice of heat or hypothermia. Uh, people will have to make the choice between food or fuel. This is you know, a ridiculously scandalous way forward. And when Alex Salmon says that his green economy will create 130,000 new jobs, well, why is it in that case that in the last quarter in Scotland, there has been a 17% increase in bankruptcies amongst business and industries in Scotland because they can't afford to pay their massively escalating electricity bills caused by the building of wind turbines, mostly, uh, from one end of Scotland to the other. It wouldn't be so bad either if these things actually help to reduce CO2 emissions, but they don't do that uh, either. The, uh, Stockholm Environment Institute, which is a widely respected uh, global organization, uh, recently reported that uh, Scottish CO2 emissions have actually risen, contrary to what the SNP government have told us about the emissions going down. So in every respect, these wind turbines do not deliver. They destroy our landscape, they destroy tourism, they don't achieve the uh, cut in greenhouse gas emissions that they uh, are supposed to achieve. They drive up uh, electricity bills. 
they are ugly, uh, they produce a trickle of electricity and the government should change its policy as quickly as possible before it's too late.